23 minutes before 8 on 3AW. We often have a joke on this program about descriptions of people's occupations. Um, it started with uh, picking up the paper one day and reading someone described as uh, former slobber Dan Milosevic henchman and Perth golf instructor. Um, as our first guest in the studio is described as a world champion gold panner, Vince Thurkettle. Good morning to you, Vince. Good morning. Uh, they have world championships in gold panning, do they? They certainly do. They had one here. Fair dinkum. Yeah. What do they do? What do they seed a, 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 a creek with gold and see who can get the most uh, out of it? More or less, but they do it. Everyone's going to have a fair chance, so they fill a trough with water. You've got 30 of those, and then you've got 20 kilos of sand and gravel, and the judges have hidden a minuscule amount of gold, and, and you hunt for that, and the guy who can pan best wins. Good grief. And we're also joined by Gwen Jones, who is a television presenter. Good morning to you, Gwen. Good morning to you. The story is about a ship called the Royal uh, Charter, um, which was making its way from the gold fields of Melbourne, yep. if you like, or from the port of Melbourne, yep. uh, trying to get back to Liverpool. Yep. Uh, with the gold that everyone had uh, had found here, sadly, yep. it didn't make it. No. Where Real did it, tragedy. Where did it end up? Well, it, it was getting home in record time, and then probably a few hours from Liverpool, the greatest hurricane to hit Britain in the last century hit the ship and pushed it onto the rocks on an island just off the coast of Wales, um, Anglesey. And it was a real tragedy because there's sandy beaches either side and had the ship just, had the anchors held. I mean, everything went against them and they came up on these rocks and pretty much everyone died. 38 survived. 38 of? About 520. Wow. What about the gold? <laughs> the gold, there was a fortune, absolutely not less than 80 million and it could have been a lot, 80 lot more. 80 million in current currency. Yeah, yeah. But that's pounds, not dollars. So whatever right. that is, maybe you know, just over 100, 120. Okay. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the passengers, I guess, didn't want to pay the taxes and that, and they were brought their gold on disguised and hidden and just didn't declare it, I suppose. So, anyway, the Victorians launched a massive salvage operation for about four years, and they did recover most of it. But I was hoping if I could find 1% of 1%, that would do me fine. Right, out. so you found it? I found some, yeah, right. yeah, a good start. But the funny thing is, you know, once you, I went there looking for the gold, no doubt about it at all. But as you start finding the artifacts and the bits and pieces, it gets more and more interesting. And yet you begin to sort of morph from being purely obsessed with the gold to being interested in the people. What's the law? Are you allowed to keep it? Uh, no, the law's a bit complicated. <laughs> it always is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I won't go through it, but basically there's, it, it takes way over a year and about seven people get to call on the gold and if, if none of them want it, eventually it comes back Who to Who are the me. seven people? Well, the crown is number two. Right. And that's where it is at the minute. The crown... What, the queen? Possess it. Yeah, the crown. Right, OK. How much have you found? No, I'm not saying. Right. Enough, enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Plenty. Yeah. Right. Enough, enough to be exciting, yeah. Right. Is any of it traceable back to people in well, Victoria? That's the interesting thing, because I was hoping to find something engraved or something that had a story. And I've been on the wreck seven summers now, and I never have. And then this last year, I found a snuff box with the name Edward Bennett on it, and I found the most beautiful little ring. Uh, which has got no hallmarks, so it wasn't made in Britain, so it was made out here. So that's the link to this really interesting story. Right, so the ring's got nothing inscribed on it? No, nothing at all. But Ed Edward Bennett? Yep, Edward Ed Bennett, 1858, is on a little snuff box. Right, and you would like to find someone who, I would, who, I would, who, who could trace themselves back to an Edward Bennett in 1858? Edward Bennett would be great, or anyone. Anyone who had a relative on that ship, say their brother, their father, mm. whatever, it would be fantastic. When you say that you've gone back uh, to the wreck four years in a row now, do you go back out and find you might have company now? There's always company, but I learnt gold prospecting and then diving, and that gives me an edge. There's a lot of divers look for gold, but they don't know where it goes. If you've right. spent 30 odd years looking for gold, you, it's so heavy. Yeah. It really nestles down in every little nook and cranny. Is there an under uh, underwater metal detector? There are plenty, but the ship is iron, and you've got 300 feet of iron, uh -huh. and it's real. And also, there's a mass of lead and copper, and everything else is down there. You so end up with that problem that the uh, famous English comedian said, Peter Cook, he, he said he bought a metal detector, but the problem was it was so sensitive it detected itself. <laughs> uh, you, 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 are, you are making a documentary uh, and you're going to present it, Gwen. Is this for Welsh television or it for all indeed, of Great Britain? Yeah, and I'm actually from the uh, island of Anglesey where the ship went down. So I grew up with this story. And, oh. um, but now, yes, I'm living in uh, Sydney. Where's your sing song Welsh accent, by the way? Oh, 
it's uh, Anglesey, North Wales. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, you're, suppo- yeah, you're supposed to have that sing song. Sort oh, of. You're, you're thinking the Valleys, are yeah, you? Yeah, I am. I'm probably when I speak Welsh, I suppose. <laughs> right. Yeah, and you're yeah. going to speak a little bit of Welsh for us later on, aren't you? If you like, you know. Right? Yeah. Have you been to Anglesey, by the way, down the coast? We've got an Anglesey of our own. I saw yes, that on the map. Yes, you have indeed. Yeah. 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 Uh, spelt differently. You haven't been down there? I haven't. I saw it on the map flying in, funny enough, and yeah. I saw it was spelt differently, an A instead of a Y. Uh, you, will get, uh, you will get detected yourself if you go to Anglesey by a speed camera because there's about 3,000 <laughs> three, three of them. I guess the thing is for these people, um, you know, they say that the, the most dangerous part of Everest is getting down. Yeah. And the most, once you ha- get your gold in, the, getting your gold in the, the, the gold fields of Ballarat and Clunes and the like is one yeah. thing, getting it home is quite another. Yeah, I think they were just plain unlucky, to be honest. As you say, they'd certainly done a lot of difficult stuff. And I think the courage, the courage and the grit and the determination to come down here, um, go out in the goldfields, face, you know, what for us is is a mass of poisonous stuff. We focus on that from Britain, I think. You know, we've got a few gnats, you've got everything else. And they survived all that. They found a fortune in gold. And it's just plain bad luck. Yeah. Real, real bad luck. When do you, uh, currently as I understand it, with the amount of gold that you have discovered, you're currently running eighth behind the seven people who have a claim to it. <laughs> no, no. When do, you, when do you discover that you might actually be first? Uh, long time. I, I, the first lot I found was in 2007 and they haven't made a decision on ownership yet. Who's they? Uh, the Crown and mm. the Receiver of Rec, who's the government department that looks after it. Right, there's a thing called a Receiver of Rec. Oh, yeah. Mm. Is there yeah. a statute of limitations on that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's in my interest to annoy them, so I've sort yeah. of just gently nudged them every so... Maybe I've been too gentle. Right. I'd nudge them every so often, and every so often they say the Crown is still thinking about it. So why are you back in Victoria and well, filming? It's is it in part up... to try to find Edward Bennett yeah, of 1858? It's all of that stuff. Last year we had a good year. We, as I say, we found the first stuff with a name on. We found some really beautiful stuff. I put a piece in the Daily Telegraph, which is a main British newspaper, yep. and this film company picked it up and said, this is the most amazing story. It picks up everything from a storm which changed weather forecasting in Britain, the socio-economic development of Britain and Australia together, and, and the personal tragedy, the simple human mm-hmm. tragedy. You know, one entire family was wiped out in this, the father, mother, all the children, everything. So there's every angle, if you like, adventure, romance, wealth, tragedy, everything's there. When's it going to air, Gwen? Uh, June or July at this present moment, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, being picked up internationally as well. So, by um, Australia as well? Yes, indeed. Well, yeah. who Foxtel. By? Foxtel? Yeah. Good, uh, good work. Now, you want to give us a little bit of Welsh? This I is to go, indeed, on the doc- yeah. uh, go on the documentary. All right. But I die on the bow in Australia, a gobitio booking caton yawn, also skin a key in Ruvath with Botteth, and then a royal charter for Nuchni, San Hanega de Mino, but I die on the you just use seven words you're not allowed to use on Australian radio, but <laughs> ne- <laughs> 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 nevertheless, lovely to meet you both. Okay, yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Hey, uh, good luck. I hope you end up running first. Brilliant, so do I. Thank you. Uh, Vince Thurkettle, world champion goal penner and treasure hunter and Gwen Jones uh, presenter. We'll see that uh, on one of Foxtel's channels, probably Discovery, I imagine, uh, about the wreck of the Royal Charter, which almost made it home.